In the church, there's sheep and goats, shepherds and wolves. And Jesus, according to 1 Peter 5, is chief shepherd. A good shepherd is not one who just gives mercy to everyone. Some of you who are shepherding, and this will be my fatherly rebuke, you're cowards and you're hurting the church. Because you, in an effort to be really, really nice, want to shepherd everyone. Well, you don't shepherd a wolf. You don't shepherd a wolf. Part of shepherding is the ability to distinguish between wolves and goats sheep. Matthew 24, verse 24. False Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Both of them seem to say, if they predict, and it comes true, but they do it in the name of another God, they are a false teacher. If they do the miraculous. Now friends, I think we've been captured by the miraculous. Because I want to remind you that Matthew 24, 24, as Jesus looks into the future and, and affirms that false teachers will always be with us, says, in the last day will come false teachers doing signs and wonders and lead even the elect astray, if that were possible. Which says that we cannot put over emphasis in the supernatural, supernormal, to affirm who speaks and does not speak for God. Counterfeit religious authority, making sons of hell. That is why they are cursed. Verse 13, woe to you. Verse 14, woe to you. Verse 15, woe to you. Verse 16, woe to you. And then verse 23, and verse 25, and verse 27, and verse 29. This is damnation pronounced upon religious hypocrites. There's nothing in this text to indicate that Jesus was trying to find common ground with counterfeit religious authorities. He wasn't trying to find a place where they could agree on something for the good of civil morality. Listen to what Jesus is saying. I have a few things against you because you suffer and or you permit that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now look this way, please. The Greek word for Jezebel here is a synonym which means false doctrine. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and lying signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refused to love the truth. Fire on you in Jesus mighty name! Or whether he's preaching at the live crusades that attract millions around the world, one thing is sure. Substance. Benny Hinn is never dull. Substance. The tumor fell to the platform. I mean, it fell to the platform. We saw it with something else, and it broke in pieces. A plague on those people. Curses from God on those people. False spiritual leaders are always self-appointed experts. They are not placed there by God, not called by God, not confirmed by godly leaders, not faithful to the truth, self-appointed. False doctrine can damn you as probably quicker than any other sin on the face of the earth. And I believe that false doctrine by false teachers are sending more people to hell than all the drug pushers and all the boo sellers and all the atheists on the face of this earth. They're bringing a blessing with this new teaching. It's blessing. It's not presented as a problem, it's presented as a blessing. Be ready in season and out of season to reprove, rebuke, exhort 
notice that that is not what these preachers do. The gospel was the judgment of God on a slumbering church. A church that wanted prosperity and security. They wanted no cross, no work, no repentance, no cutting of the sword, no living water. They wanted to feel good. And so God, you see the Old Testament, poured a spirit of judgment on what called itself the church of Jesus Christ. It was the judgment of God. It began in the church, and I remember saying to other people, it will not be long, and the judgment will be touching the shores of North America. Because Matter of fact, they boast in the fact that they do not reprove. They do not rebuke. It's not their ministry. And why do they say it's not their ministry? They have a ministry of love, they say. Well, then are you saying Christ didn't have a ministry of love because he reproved and rebuked and exhorted, and so did Paul. And that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, that's our profession of faith. Whosoever calls the name of the Lord, going back to Habakkuk and then to Romans 10. Here's some guys who are saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we preach in your name? Didn't we cast out demons? There's effective exorcism. Didn't we do miracles in your name? There's confirmation signs. And Jesus said to them, Depart from me, you accursed, for I never knew you. Which seems to say that it is not outward signs that's the last word, but personal relationship. In Jeremiah chapter 14, verses 14 and 15, the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying falsehood in my name. I have neither sent them, nor commanded them, nor spoken to them. Multitudes of blind Christians are going to churches and singing and shouting and praising the Lord in churches that are enslaved by false doctrine and they don't even know it. Thousands are sitting under this and they're having this gospel poured into them. In fact, they're so blind they're going out saying, isn't it wonderful? This we need to be aware of. False teachers in the church do not get a following by being mean-spirited and harsh. They get a following by being nice, kind, gentlemanly, fair-minded, humble. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Who won't? The people, the religious people identified with Christianity, they will not endure sound doctrine. They can't endure it. They hate it. Or it bores them to tears. And so what do they do? But wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers. Now I will, I, I, I'll go ahead and tell you this now, don't, don't get disturbed because he said three billionaires. Now I don't, I don't want you to get disturbed because uh, since I'm one of them, it'll only leave two more. <laughs> no, now wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, of course, I'm saying this with a smile on my face, but I'm serious as I can be. But now, I'm not one of those three since I already am one. <laughs> I've already appropriated that. I've been walking in that a long time. The last. Now, don't tell him, Senator. The last time we totaled it up, which had been some time ago, this ministry, since it's been in operation 41 years this month, the last, the, the, the last accounting, and this has been, this has been uh, two, three years ago, so there would probably be at least 150 million more added to this. Well, our income last year was over 100 million dollars, so uh, there has been over a billion three come into this ministry since it's went into operation. So, amen. 
I'm not a billionaire because there's been over a billion dollars come through this ministry. I am a billionaire because the assignment that the Lord gave me, he said, I want you to begin to confess the billion flow. Because as long as you were in the million flow, you were winning millions. You go into the billion flow, you win billions. So I said, yes, sir, I believe I receive it. It's been a number of years ago, and I have confessed that I am in the billion flow and that I am a billionaire in the kingdom of God. So we must listen to the content, evaluate it biblically. We must look at the lifestyle and evaluate it biblically. And if either one of those comes up with warning lights, then we must be certain to check what is said by the ultimate authority for all Christians, which is scripture, and allow some freedom inside that understanding. They're prophesying to you a false vision, divination, futility, and the deception of their own minds. Do you think that's gone away? That hasn't gone away. But you know, it's serious where you go to church. It's serious the kind of message that you sit under. It's serious the kind of teaching that has your heart. So if you have your antenna up for bad guys, or the bad guys, mean, mean and ugly and harsh, and you're not going to spot them. Now, what, look, we accumulate for ourselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. So you get a Benny Hinn in there who all he wants to do is tell you you're going to have a Mercedes Benz. Those people aren't victims. They're, he is ju God's judgment upon them. Just because it's said from a pulpit doesn't mean it's true. Just because it's said from someone with a doctor's degree doesn't mean it's true. Just because it fits your personal preferences doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> many people today run from one set of signs and wonders to another set of signs and wonders until the sign worker leaves his wife or flies away in his jet with everybody's money pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching preserve in these things for as you do this you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. May God bless His church. They never come from CNN. They never come from Guru Maharashi Yogi Yucky. They come from us. They come from within our fellowships. They come out of our seminaries. 
They come out of our Sunday schools. They come out of the families in the church. These are wolves in sheep's clothing. They look like us, talk like us, carry our book, use our vocabulary, but they do not know our God. And they're leading the people of God astray to destruction and a sooner than normal death. False authority, counterfeit authority, inevitably self-appointed. And when you try to hold them to a biblical standard, they will scream that you are intolerant and narrow-minded and bigoted and judgmental and divisive and condemning. Because that's their only defense to back you off. And by the way, that defense has worked wonderfully in contemporary evangelicalism. First of all, the true doctrine of Jesus Christ is a doctrine that teaches the denial of all ungodliness and worldly lust in this life. Not just in eternity, but here and now. What you've got is a bunch of goats and tares among the sheep. And because very little biblical compassionate church discipline is practiced, they live among the sheep, they feed on the sheep, and they destroy the sheep. And those of you who are leaders in the church are going to pay a high penalty when you stand before the one who loves them. Because you did not have enough courage to stand up and confront the wicked. That a heretic is someone who raises one truth to the exclusion or eclipse of all other truths. Sheep need to be brought to repentance, cared for, nurtured, helped, loved, served. Goats need to be rebuked and not given the illusion that they're sheep. And wolves need to get shot. That the whole analogy of wolves, it comes up out of Acts chapter 20 where Paul says in his farewell address to the Ephesian elders, when I leave, men will arise from your own number, distort the truth, and lead many astray. The greatest threat to the health of any church is wolves in the flock. Right? It's not the dark city and the atheists and the homosexuals and the abortion doctors. We... We want them all to meet Jesus and come to repentance. But the truth is, if someone says, I hate Jesus, they're not going to get a big following. It's the person who comes in and says, I love Jesus, but I, I don't submit to spiritual authority. I don't submit to sound doctrine. Listen to me, not to them. I have my own issue, my own agenda. I'm seeking my own ministry, my own cause, my own fame, my own glory, my own power. Just read various manifestations of spiritual pride, which is demonic. And then people are confused by that because wolves love to eat sheep. Paul says they will distort the truth and lead people astray. What's the matter with us? We've been poisoned by health, wealth, and prosperity preaching on our radio and TV and bookstores. Withdraw thyself from any teaching, any doctrine that teaches you that gay is godliness. Spirituality is not what will get you into heaven. A personal relationship in the finished work of Jesus Christ plus a change in changing life as ever. It's of hours I have had just going at it with somebody who is a wolf and just telling them, look, you have got to go. You are not welcome here. You're, you're a false teacher. You're a false prophet. You're a false apostle. You're a false leader. You keep nominating yourself to have power. We don't see in you the humility and the character and the doctrine that the scriptures require. And as the church gets bigger and it spreads, you have to guard the gate. For those of you who are shepherds, you have to guard the gate. And it can't be, I give mercy to everyone who comes. Because if it's a wolf, Feeding the wolf only allows them to be stronger so that they can devour more sheep. Your goal is not just to be nice to people and care for them. Your job is to be discerning and to ask yourself, goat or sheep, wolf or shepherd? It takes discernment. It takes a tremendous amount of discernment. 
And the longer you make an erroneous evaluation of someone, the more influence they have, the louder their voice, the deeper they're following, and the more painful it will be to deal with them. This will be, it's not that it will be, it is an ongoing issue. We have conflict and wars on multiple fronts. We have many new Christians, we have many non-Christians, we have many people that are just coming to an understanding of the gospel. We would be the perfect place that Satan would love to send, would love to send false teachers, false prophets, false apostles, false leaders, and false doctrine. You have to assume that. You have to assume that. And one of my great concerns is not just, can you hold hands and help sheep, but can you also defend against a wolf? You have to have that discernment, that courage, and that ability to tell someone you are in sin. That is false doctrine. You are not qualified to be a leader. If you do not repent, you are not welcome here. And I will speak truthfully to those who want to follow you because my job is for the well-being of the sheep. This is incredibly important, and I believe it is absolutely essential for the health and well-being of the forward progress of the church. We will grow, but so will the opposition. We will teach, but in addition to that, false teaching will escalate at the same level trying to undo everything that God has done.